Well, today we're in Ballard County, right here on the bank of a swamp. We're getting ready to do something that's super cool. We've done this one other time, years ago in a different county. What are we getting ready to do today? So we're getting ready to uh, try to use a rocket net to trap some wood ducks. Trapping wood ducks, there's a couple reasons why we do this, but it takes some prep work. So we kind of show up for all the fun. You guys have actually been working for a couple weeks to prep this site and get it just right. You know, it starts actually in uh, midsummer. We come in here and all the vegetation gets sprayed and we try to clean the site as, as well as possible because any sticks or herbaceous vegetation binds our net. So whenever it goes off, it causes issues. You know, some of the original prep work is putting up cameras, getting ducks on bait, getting them used to the site, and then slowly but surely adding in the net, adding in blinds, getting them more acclimated for today when we're gonna actually shoot the net and try to ban some ducks. So you've been baiting these ducks and you're talking about like hundreds of pounds of what? Wheat is wheat. what we've been using, yeah. So the ducks kind of come in, they find it, and then they start gaining in numbers and hopefully we get a chance to fire these rockets. Yep. So wildlife biologists also need to be bomb technicians as well, <laughs> it looks like. <laughs> and these are gonna get a charge in them of what, is it gunpowder? It is, it's a type of uh, munitions that we're able to get through U.S. Fish. We have a stockpile of those for being able to band well into the future right now. Okay. So, And the idea is to get the data that you want, mm -hmm. get these banded, and get them turned loose pretty quickly, right? Absolutely. Looking at weather the last few days, I've been, you know, looking at temperatures. We have in the past been able to band in the afternoons, but it takes a little bit more prep work to make sure the ducks are cool, to make sure they're not overheating and uh, that we're getting them out of the net and separating them so that they're not getting physically exhausted. Yeah, yeah. All right, we're all set. Let's get in the ground line and wait on the ducks. All right, sounds good. They're just now coming up on the bank, so we're just waiting on the ducks to get on bait. Hopefully we'll be able to shoot the net there pretty soon. There are tons of ducks right by us, right here, right now. Oh yeah, they're flying in and literally landing 15 feet from the shoreline. They tend to get their stage up and then they'll cross the net and you'll see once one of them gets on bait, then they'll all go to bait. These ducks have more discipline than me. If I was sitting that close to a meal, I'd have a rough time holding off. As they lose confidence, they'll kind of fly back out in the water. They're a little wary. They're kind of testing the waters, if you will. They're all congregating on the bank again, just like before. I can't tell how many's out there, probably 50 or 60. They're crossing the net. Once they cross the net, you'll start seeing them run to bait, and then the others will pick up and fly to bait behind them. It's really neat to watch. I've seen them do that four to five times before we was actually able to shoot the net, so. They're already coming back over the net again. There's still birds on bait, so they're not as afraid to go on up to bait. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot it. Three, two, one. Every single time that thing goes off, you know it's gonna happen. It still shocks the fire out of you. So it's a mad dash to try to get these birds out of the net. We wanna to try to do as little damage to the birds as you possibly can. That's a female. Female. Looks like a female. Here we go. I'm gonna go in the male cage. So now they've got all the birds sorted into male versus females. We're gonna take these cages back to the truck where they got all the bands. From that point, they'll start sorting them out, banding them, recording the data, and then turning them loose. We'll run male birds through one side and female birds through the other. We'll have whoever's getting the birds out, they'll check to make sure that it is a male that was put inside of the cage that it was in. You got the bar shaped wide on the end of the speculum. That indicates a male most of the time. In a female, that white part will be teardrop shaped. These guys have been doing it for years and they're able to spot some of the adult birds. That's really what we're looking for mostly is the adult females. 
Yeah, I'm gonna call that an adult. What is wood duck population in Kentucky like right now? It's very stable. That's the whole reason that we're doing this banding is to be able to see the numbers year after year, get that recapture data, and be able to map these birds and where they're going and how they spend their winters. This is a conservation aspect. If you want to duck hunt, the department has to have this project going forward for early wood duck season. And I think the department is pretty well committed to it. I know that our sportsmen and women here in the state of Kentucky that do duck hunt enjoy that early duck season. Tell me some areas that'd be good for wood duck hunting. Obviously, right here at Boatwright is a good location. Yeah, so I mean, there's a lot of WMAs across the state that have options to be able to wood duck hunt. Even in the eastern part of the state, some of the rivers and lakes, there's a good number of wood ducks that are there. Last bird, look at that brand new hardware on there. Turn it loose, ready? Well, I'll tell you what, coming down here and doing this is always a lot of fun. And I don't know how else you can get this up and close and personal with wood ducks or other forms of wildlife literally in your hand. Thank you so much. It's been Thank a blast. You.